We're here with Westfield, who is the global head of databases for Palantir. Welcome, Wes. Thanks, nice to be here. Uh, uh, Oracle Cloud World is going great so far. I'm really looking forward to Journey, and um, got to speak a little bit at our, our defense conference yesterday, which was kind of the highlight for the event for me, I think. Oh, wow, wow, okay. Lots of things going on behind the scenes here. And, yeah. and, and for those watching, Journey is uh, our kind of after party uh, experience tonight. You're a big Journey fan? Yeah, I, I mean, I used to listen to Journey uh, with my dad going to school on, 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 the, on, the, on the radio, so you can see them again. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. Awesome. Well, hey, maybe not every, I think people have mostly heard Palantir, but may not know the intricacies of the Palantir uh, history and, and the number of businesses that your company is in. Can you, can you give us a, a little brief on Palantir to start us off? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so at its heart, Palantir started in data integration, which was a very kind of unsexy thing to do uh, in the early 2000s. Not a great pitch for a company. We're going to integrate data for the government. <laughs> uh, everyone thought that was uh, maybe not worth investing in, but um, that kind of lineage of, of doing hard things for the government took us into the commercial space where we built products to do that at companies um, in order to build operational software. Uh, effectively, every company wants to build software where they can make decisions and run their company better, um, and that's what Palantir really focuses on. Got it, and how long has Palantir been around? So Palantir started in the early 2000s. We've been around for more than 20 years. We were just admitted to the S&P 500, so it's been a, heard that. It's been a long road, but, but, uh, but, but, but looks like we made it. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, so Palantir provides data services for some of the most demanding businesses and organizations uh, around the globe. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So Palantir really supports critical missions from all the way from the DOD to our international allies to uh, the most important companies that are running critical operations. So things like supply chains of America, the hospitals of, of, of America, um, into uh, airlines, we have a massive aviation business. And the things that kind of unify all these companies is they are very mission driven, they want the software to work, they have very complex operations that make them unique, so sometimes off the, off the shelf software products do not accomplish those things. You know, it's like if I'm running a global supply chain for Tyson Foods, for example, that's extremely complex. Um, and I need, uh, and my business does not run like every other business does. So while we as a software company have an opinion, what we do is actually really deeply partner with them to, to, to kind of achieve the complexity required to run their operations. And you guys have a couple of different platforms, as I understand yeah. it, uh, Gotham and Foundry. Can you talk about those and who Absolutely. they're for? Yeah, so Gotham was on our first product. It was really kind of specific to the DOD and then later to the Warfighter. So uh, again, achieve kind of uh, integrating data uh, to drive the necessary intelligence to make decisions on the battlefield or in intelligence. And we've expanded Gotham to, uh, you know, to other to, uh, government use cases, but Foundry really came out of almost the generalization of Gotham. Uh, you know, these workflows and, and software is a bit too opinionated to, to bring into a hospital or to bring into an airline or to bring into a, a financial ecosystem. So Foundry was kind of the evolution and almost the agnosticization of being able to build software quickly at scale, independent of the data systems and the infrastructure that was present at these organizations. There's a lot of complexity there, but being able to develop that product took a long time, but it's been tremendously successful, and now our commercial business has actually started to eclipse even our government business. Oh wow, that's great. And how is AI becoming a part of these operations? AI was sort of the, the, the top-down justification that everyone was looking for of like, why do I want to do hard data integration and build my own software? Like, you know, it, it, you can explain that and certain people get it, but with AI, I think everyone gets it. And it's like, you need to have this robust system of security, of, of, of dependable production grade data infrastructure and data integration to power real software on what we call the ontology which is kind of our foundational architectural concept, and that's what we run our AI on top of. So it's like, how do I make AI an expert in my business? It's kind of a dumb intern until you give it um, the actual kind of uh, real picture of your business and your operating model. That's what our, our technology provides. So we run generative AI 
on top of that model to actually automate parts of the business. Not just as a chatbot that writes haikus, but actually to kind of execute business function and bring people from kind of problems to solutions. You talked about uh, defense and intelligence and then also on the enterprise side, you have businesses, customers that have unique uh, security and then I'll make sure I say this separately, sovereignty needs as well. True. Um, can you characterize what some of these needs look like? Totally. I mean, from our lineage and working with the government, we obviously work on highly sensitive uh, cloud environments and on-prem environments and, and, and disconnected environments. We have to still be able to run um, our systems, so we have a piece of software that deploys blue-green updates to all of these different um, uh, environments at scale uh, and run our products. And I think, uh, you know, while we have expanding clouds, we still have um, a lot of issues around data security and data sovereignty. Um, one of the reasons that we love Oracle so much is that you have an expansive cloud ecosystem in parts of the world that, uh, you know, honestly uh, don't, don't have the build out that, that you do. And so we see tremendous opportunity in kind of like our partnership, which we are very, very pleased about, uh, to be able to kind of partner in those parts of the world and, and, and at scale. Well, let's talk more about that. Why, yeah. why was Oracle the right partner for, to move your foundry and Gotham workloads to OCI? Yeah, I think when you look at the lineage of, the, uh, of both companies, um, Oracle also started working with the government, and I think that shared sort of DNA Make, uh, means that Palantir and Oracle have built products that are highly dependable, and you know when we say that it's built to spec and it's and it's reliable for these things, like we kind of mean it. I think Oracle builds the best data systems in the world, um, and Palantir uh, takes advantage of those at scale, runs on top of your infrastructure, and um, we've been tremendously happy with our partnership so far, and we see it expanding, you know, into the future. And and one of the things in in terms of your business and 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 platforms like Gotham and Foundry is some of those require different cloud deployment models. That's true. My understanding is too that there is that sort of uniformity of OCI across those is another advantage. That's exactly right. I think when you think about the evolution of cloud, it's like uh, we, we created the cloud because most companies do not want to run their own on-prem systems, though some do. Um, that isn't their core business, and so they want a dependable cloud uh, like, like OCI to rely on. And we see our software as almost the abstraction of those underlying services of like, actually companies don't want to worry about the underlying services, they want to focus on building software and running AI and, and making better decisions as a company. But in order to do all those things, the whole stack has to be reliable, right? So in order for our software to perform um, and be trusted by customers, we need a dependable foundation, and that's what we get from Oracle. How has our partnership evolved over these past several months? I think it's evolved extremely rapidly. I think uh, we, we, we first uh, conceived of the partnership more than eight months ago, signed it six-ish months ago, and, and started building uh, and deploying, and we're, we're already at GA of our platform on Oracle Cloud, which is kind of the fastest that it's ever been accomplished. And I think that really boils down to um, you, what you guys said was true. Uh, Things only go off timeline when uh, we get into the weeds and realize that the infrastructure isn't ex actually as uh, reliable as advertised and we have to make changes and timelines expand, but this was the quickest that we've ever been able to kind of um, to GAI our product. And your expectations weren't that high as I understand. But well, not, not that they weren't high, but you didn't know that it would be this. I, I think fast. It, yeah, I think it's always like uh, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, <laughs> in any. And any I think we've case. learned that. That's just in our DNA. Sure. We've, you know, the, the places that we've been deployed around the world, the problems that we've solved. Um, a lot of times it's said, oh yeah, you know, this is this. It'll take this long, and, it, and it's never really true. So we're always pleasantly surprised when that that is actually the case. That's great. Well, congratulations. Thank and thank you for uh, for working with us on that and how are we seeing, how are you guys seeing customers benefit from that? What are some of the use cases that are starting to see the, the fruits of this labor? Well, you know, Palantir has expanded very radically in healthcare, for example. I've had some really interesting conversations um, with, with, uh, with, with, with healthcare attendees today running hospitals. Those are, that's a really important vertical for us. Um, using systems like Fusion and EBS, which we're really uh, excited to integrate with. And obviously, um, Oracle's announcement of kind of their EHR partnership is very exciting, I think, to, to us. 
Um, that's just one vertical. Um, and we're really excited about, again, I mentioned like the, the regions of the world um, where our allies are, are kind of operating that Palantir wants to deploy into and support um, for kind of our more defense and, and government applications. Fantastic. So what, is, what does the future hold for our partnership then, extending on that? I think the, 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 the horizon is almost near limitless in the opportunity that we can achieve. I think Oracle, um, your stock has done almost as well as ours. <laughs> so I, I, we hope to kind of uh, partner the future and really support the critical operations of our most important businesses and our most important governments around the world. And ultimately, um, with the rise of AI, I think everyone wants to actually fuse generative AI in their operations at scale, beyond kind of just chatbots on dependable systems that are secure. And I think that's something that um, Oracle and Palantir will be partnered for, for, for the foreseeable future. Not to put you on the spot here, but we heard in Steve Miranda's keynote this morning about intelligent agents. Yes. Is, is that an area that uh, interests Palantir? That is, the, that is what Palantir has become most known for, I think, in the commercial right? space is being able to kind of agentify uh, the, the, these kind of great artists, as our CEO says, as, as LLMs, but actually provide the security and the guardrails into actual operational opinionated workflows that aren't just kind of toys, but really running some of the critical operations. And, and, and uh, an Oracle Cloud kind of supports that. You, your title is Global Head of Databases no. for Palantir. Sure. Give, give us a little insight on how difficult that is in some of these environments that, that you're talking about. Yeah, I think it, it, um, it's, it's a tremendous challenge because when we deploy AIP, um, you often have multiple clouds, you often have multiple disconnected systems. You go into some of our largest institutions, it's kind of like the rings of a tree on a large sequoia. You know, they've been around for 100 years and so have their systems. Right. You know, literally uh, AS400s on the manufacturing oh floor. It's like, how are you going to unify that? And so those are the type of systems and, 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 that we, and so we, when we get a nice Oracle system, it's always a treat. We don't, <laughs> uh, we don't always get that. Um, and so I think that's another thing that we can partner is, is like the, the modernization and, and kind of uh, moving up those systems on, on the ring on the tree to kind of uh, at our largest institutions and governments is, is, is very important. You talked about some of the stuff around health. What in these in your time here at Cloud World for the last couple of days, what are some of the, the announcements, maybe recent innovations that excite you the most? Ah, uh, okay, well, I was really uh, compelled by uh, the presentation at our defense summit about Oracle's edge capabilities oh, yeah. in compute, being able to have kind of um, scaled edge nodes uh, in uh, different uh, disconnected environments, for example. Is, a, is a hugely interested. I kind of mentioned your EHR yep. um, acquisition, which I, as Palantir's uh, health vertical is exploding, and so I right. think there's a deep partnership to be had there. Um, and I think the splashiest thing was uh, the nuclear power data centers uh, on small nuclear reactors that uh, Larry talked about. Right. Um, I am really interested in data center operations as well. I, I, I think that Palantir can play an, uh, a, a great role in kind of um, more effectively running these very large data centers at scale. Yeah, well there's a lot a lot of innovation to be had there and, and uh, I'm glad to, uh, you did, You actually should be on this show and, and help us I would love tie to, up I all these. I would love to come <laughs> back and be on the show. We can do a morning show to, or a podcast, we can there, do a podcast. There we go, I mean you, you wrapped <laughs> up everything really nicely and touched multiple inter industries, so thank you for that and thank you so much for joining us today, Wes. Thank you so much, Fritz. Okay, great.